Thank you for being here with another uh, round of the Source Weekly endorsement process. We're here with Oscar and Carmen, both running for Redmond School Board. Um, to start off things, we're just gonna go um, start with Carmen and just please introduce yourself and say why you're running for this position. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm Carmen Lawson and I'm running for the Redmond School Board position number four. Um, I am a mother and a teacher and uh, empathizer with uh, community members. Um, the reasons I am running for school board is because I want to be intentional about the way that I serve in my community. Um, I do that through being an educator. Um, and I think that running for school board will help me to use the skills that I know from the classroom um, to have, have that lens of a teacher on the school board. Um, I strongly believe that students need to have the oppor all opportunity, all students need to have all opportunities. Um, so I really wanna be an advocate for um, students. Um, every day in the classroom where I teach, um, I'm a resident of Redmond, but I teach in Madras. So I have lots of students that are um, low socioeconomic status. Um, I have a diverse um, demographics um, of students of color. Um, and so, um, I see the challenges that they bring into the classroom and, and just wishing that I could help create policies and systems that will support them and their families um, so that they can be engaged in learning. Thanks so much. Oscar, tell us why you're running. It's time. It's time for me. It's time for a change in this community. We've got over 20% uh, of our students are Latino or Latinx. And we have no one uh, representing those particular and, and complex issues. So I feel uh, obligated to uh, at least be that one person at the table uh, discussing very important issues. Uh, a lot of it having to do with diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as uh, providing more culturally relevant um, materials, curriculum, pedagogy, uh, training more of our teachers to be more culturally competent and humble, uh, as well as, um, and mandating that across the board from top to bottom. Um, it's very important to get more teachers um, of color in front of our kids. So to push and help however which way uh, I could um, to make that happen. Uh, I've been uh, a social worker for 30 years and uh, 20 of those years in schools uh, at all levels. Um, and most recently I've, I've been the empowerment programs manager uh, here in the region for the Latino Community Association. I have uh, three grown daughters, all college graduates. Out, uh, and that's the tone that I'd like to set for our families. Uh, but across the board, high expectations um, and, and provide those opportunities on an equitable basis. And that's where I would also, uh, it would be important for me to um, kind of be, in a, a, a provide oversight to make sure that whatever spending is allocated, especially right now with the Student Success Act monies uh, that will be coming, uh, to make sure that those monies are applied how they are intended. So that's a little bit about what I'm about, and we could discuss some of these issues and, and beyond as we move forward. Thanks. Definitely, yeah. We'll get into some more some some of the things you both mentioned. Um, my next question, and we'll start with Oscar on this one: What makes a good school board member, in your opinion? Someone who is uh, out there uh, visiting the schools, talking to not just the administrators but faculty and staff, talking to students, having sitting down and having lunch with them. Um, I would make myself available uh, as much as possible, but beyond that, the community itself, and, and, and luckily I'm in a position where I have a lot of contact with our Latino families here locally in Redmond. I live in Redmond, so uh, I, I, I see them uh, at the grocery market and gas stations and everywhere else, and, and so, uh, they know me and they talk and, and we've had forums and we talk about education and, and, and so we're, we have our, we have that finger, our finger on that pulse 
And so I think, uh, you know, being, bringing that community voice um, also to those meetings is, is as important as my thoughts and, and opinions and, and so forth. Great, Carmen, would you like a repeat of that question? Um, no, I think I got it. Okay. Um, I just wanna, um, I agree with lots of the things that Oscar, uh, Mr. Gonzalez is saying, absolutely. Um, you know, um, in our communities, we need to make sure that we represent, um, the school board needs to represent um, the needs of our community, but also bridging, um, uh, differing opinions, um, bridging, um, maybe uh, uh, making sure that administrators, teachers, parents, um, people who are kind of in the in the trenches of uh, the school are being heard on the school board. Um, so they understand the policies that they're creating in the school board, um, how it translates into the classroom. Um, but I absolutely agree with all um, that Mr. Gonzalez is saying about how it's really important that we really focus on equity in the classroom um, so that the students that have suffered the most, especially through the pandemic, that they get those supports that they need to bridge that opportunity gap, the activity gap, the learning gap, whatever you wanna call those gaps. Um, that we're, that's where most of our focus needs to be to bring them up um, and to help lift all of Central Oregon's youth. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is definitely a topic that um, I'm sure ha has a lot of varying opinions for folks in Redmond. The legislature is poised to um, to allow uh, to pass a bill that allows local governments the option to ban people with concealed carry permits from bringing firearms into public buildings. Do you believe that all schools and the district office should be gun-free zones with anyone who has a concealed weapon permit required to check their gun at the door? And this one will go to you first, Carmen. Um, yeah, um, I do not believe that guns belong on school campuses. Um, uh, aside from the resource officer who is a trained professional in using a gun, I do not believe that um, teachers or administrators or people who do not aren't highly trained with uh, weapons should not be, have, school is not a place for guns. Um, and especially, um, I just keep on circling back to the youth that I work with every day. Um, guns are a really scary thing for them. That's a really, tr could be a traumatic um, thing to think about. So school's not where that happens. School is where you need to learn and grow and feel loved and have relationships. Uh, school is not where guns need to be. Thanks. Oscar, would you like a repeat of that question? No, I, I've got it, and, and I would just love to underscore Carmen's sentiment. And Carmen, feel free to call me Oscar. Because <laughs> okay. um, ditto with everything you, you've said. I, I, I grew up in uh, East Los Angeles, and uh, guns and, 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 and violence, the permeation in, in our barrios uh, resulted in so much harm. And, and I can't tell you how many funerals I attended uh, growing up, but also as, as a, a school uh, staff person. Um, so I, I have some very strong views, and, and, and if it was up to me, I'd get rid of all of them, uh, except obviously for law enforcement, uh, like, like our officers on campus uh, there that, are, that need to be there, and, and uh, our SROs, obviously. Um, but I would love to expand our role beyond just the vigilant role, but also a friend of uh, the students, a mentor for the students, a coach for the students. I mean, there's so many possibilities because again, Carmen talked about building bridges. And right now, um, a lot of our youth obviously are very trepidatious around law enforcement, uh, quite naturally, particularly in what the events that's transpired over the past year. So we need to be very sensitive of that and build those relationships in a positive way. And so, uh, yeah, no guns on campus uh, ever. Thank you. Um, so another legislative thing, uh, last uh, this March, um, the legislature allocated $250 million for summer programs to help students catch up and gain enrichment following a year of online instruction. How do you think this funding should be used in your district? And Oscar, you are up. Boy, if... Um... We have a chance to uh, assign uh, as few kids to students. And, and hopefully as we move through the summer to the fall, 
Uh, we'll have more opportunities to meet in person, which I think is gonna, I think make a huge difference. But a lot of um, the efforts obviously need to start on the front end with uh, re-engagement of these, what I call MIA kids uh, and families and get them back on track one. Um, uh, and some people talk in terms of lost learning over the last year and you know what's happened, we can't go back and make up, but what we can do, and, and I love the fact that we're gonna start it as soon as the summer, is to accelerate the learning and raise the bar and, and really uh, work very closely uh, and, and, and not just put it on the schools, uh, but work with community-based organizations such as ours and, and, and others, uh, Fathers Group, and, you know, who are providing uh, community folks to become tutors and mentors and to augment uh, uh, what, what teachers are, are trying to get going again. And, and, and the other kids that I worry about are those kids that have totally gone sideways and uh, the older high school kids that are now fully employed or trying to be fully employed because of the impact that COVID has had uh, economically on, on their own families personally. And so a lot of them feel committed first and uh, kind of set it, you know, their education aside. So we worry about a lot of those kids as well. So uh, good to know, good to know about the money com coming in. Yeah, uh, Carmen, a repeat? Um, yes, please. Okay, so legislature allocated $250 million for summer programs to help students catch up and gain enrichment following this year of online instruction. How do you think this funding should be used in the Redmond District? Um, this is a great hope. Um, I feel that... Um, before we start kind of diving into the future, we need to kind of take a pause to see why these huge gaps exist, you know? Um, what systems weren't working for us so that um, the gaps were created and so magnified during the pandemic? Um, some, I absolutely agree that um, with lots of the things that Oscar said, like we really need to make sure that the student to teacher ratio needs to be low so that um, those students are building relationships with the adults in their lives so that they want to be engaged in learning, uh, especially um, also like clubs or music or sports or STEAM clubs. Um, if students feel like they have that um, extra love and support from those smaller communities, um, then they're going to be more likely to be engaged in learning through graduation. Um, I know there's a lot of panic right now about getting students back to where they need to be and like um, jumping forward. Um, but I think, yeah, we definitely need to take a pause to see why it, why the gap was created originally, you know? Um, and so, uh, yeah, my husband, he's a, he's a high school teacher and he does work with a lot of lots of students in his music program are Latino and they are not coming back to his music class because they are working full time now. They're so helping to support their family and that is just heartbreaking to him and he's trying to figure out how to reach back out to them and um, get them that high school graduation. Um, so yeah, this, these are real problems and you know, it needs, the money needs to be used strategically and to help, like we've said before, um, lift the students that need it the most. Gotcha. This one's back at you, Carmen. Um, what is your overall impression of how the district has handled the COVID-19 pandemic? Maybe what would you have done differently had you been on the board at that time? <laughs> um, I really feel that teachers and administrators did the best that they could have done with the information that they had at the time. Um, uh, teachers and schools are very flexible and nimble with resources and um, things that they have um, just to do that. I really feel like they did the best that they could with what they had um, and the knowledge that we had at the time. Um, something that if I were to go back and change anything, I would absolutely target those students that we knew didn't have home support, didn't have technology knowledge, didn't have motivation, maybe had mental health issues, really focus more on those students. Um, my, my own kid, I have three sons. And um, something I like to say, something I've heard in trainings before is um, they're they are born on third base. And what that means is they're white, they're male, we're middle class, you know, they, and both of their parents are educators. 
So I'm not running for school board for my sons. I'm running for school board for the families that need that extra support to get to third base, to get to home, to get to graduation. Um, so that's where my drive comes from is so, like, I'm just coming back to, I'm sitting in my classroom right now because I had a meeting leading up right to this. Um, you know, um, those Latino families, those Native American families um, that just really need um, the support of adults in the community that come together, that to bridge all the resources and to just really lift them. Thanks. Oscar, you want to repeat? No, I, I think I'm good. Okay. And, uh, you know, as an outsider, uh, and I don't have any kids in the district uh, looking in, uh, it appears that they followed appropriate protocol in closing down as soon as they did, uh, based on uh, data that was trickling in, uh, I guess, more than a year ago. And um, so I, I, I think, uh, you know, take being very precautious and, and, and now as we're getting ready to open up, you know, obviously doing whatever's necessary to, to ensure, you know, the safety of, of uh, the returning kids and, 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 and teachers, obviously. So um, I really don't have any complaints. I mean, in hindsight, I think obviously, and, 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 and Carmen speaks to the fact that if only we could have been a little more proactive and kind of, providing a safety net for those vulnerable uh, kids um, that are uh, already, you know, behind and, 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 and not as motivated and have, you know, are facing unique challenges um, and ensure that um, the family is engaged, that technology is up and running, that, uh, that they have, you know, uh, certain basic tools, um, but I think a big piece of it is, is family engagement. And, and, and I think most, if not all of our families uh, want that and seek that out, uh, quite honestly, um, uh, which is uh, quite the opposite of what I came across when I first moved to Redmond, Central Oregon in general, that Latinos didn't value education. And <clears throat> just, uh, it's such a, <laughs> such a fallacy because I know in my family beyond the church, that was right up there. And uh, the expectation is that, you know, we were going to go to college and, and, and become professionals and have careers. And so that's, uh, and again, as an immigrant, you know, uh, and, 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 and making that happen, uh, I'd, I'd love for that to continue to happen here as I've seen what's, what's transpired in the Southwest over the last 40 years, um, inclu uh, including with my three, with my three grown daughters. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll leave it with that. Okay. Well, that kind of brings us, you guys have both um, brought this up in different ways, but so I'll ask it in a no more pointed way. Um, the past year has brought increased attention to the needs of people and students of color. What, if any changes would you make or propose in the district to better meet the needs of students of color? And this one's for you, Oscar, to start with. Well, again, I, I think it's, it starts with the materials, the instruction, the, the, the texts, uh, the teacher's mindset, uh, all of that, um, because there's magic that's going to be happening in, in, in those respective classrooms. Um, and so um, it's, it's very important to, to uh, ensure that the folks that we do have teaching our kids, uh, again, uh, understand the values of diversity, equity, inclusion, and providing, again, a more culturally responsive curriculum that engages our students that, you know, makes education relevant for them. Uh, and not just in the vocational arenas, but I'd like to see a bigger push to get more of our minority kids into AP classes, uh, international baccalaureate courses, mm -hmm. uh, honors of courses, and be on that college track. But, you know, those attitudes and skills and, 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 and initiative uh, doesn't start in high school. Uh, I believe we got to plant those seeds early with our kids uh, and expanding dual language and again, raising the bar. Uh, but again, not just with our students, but with our teachers and holding them accountable uh, and making sure that they're reaching certain uh, achievement outcomes. Um, and uh, yeah, and if they're not willing to abide by the values of DEI and, and, and cultural diversity and, and, and so forth, I'm sorry, you know, right now, uh, we're at 20%, and uh, 
it's not going to go backward. I'll, I'll tell you that. So we need to have those kind of folks in front of our kids uh, again as we look to the future to bring our kids from different back backgrounds together and understand each other better. And, and for our kids personally, on a very personal note, so that they feel more confident and have more self-esteem and have more ambition and, and look forward to seeing themselves, uh, maybe not at Harvard or at MIT, but why not, right? At least U of O or OSU or, or UW or, or maybe my alma mater, L LMU, but they gotta go somewhere. Uh, we're so disproportionately underrepresented in higher education, but not within our criminal justice system. And we're a microcosm of the rest of the country. Right. So, uh, but it starts here locally. Great, Carmen? Yeah, um, these are all great comments and I'm gonna add to everything that Oscar, I agree with everything he said, um, but I'm gonna add some things um, that came up as he was talking that I was thinking about. Absolutely, it needs to be a teacher's top priority to stop the cycle of oppression um, and to understand what that means. Um, not only, I feel like we do need to have uh, uh, demographics of teachers that mirror the demographics of the city. Uh, so definitely more Latinos. Um, and also um, the white teachers need to understand that it is their job to understand the cycle of oppression and to stop the cycle of oppression and to call it out whenever you see it or hear it. Um, and so that ties back to the curriculum. Um, even in little kindergarten classes, it's important that you are including all races and all cultures in your books and in your literature and in your story word problems. I mean, so that they understand the things that you're talking about in class, they can make connections to home. And so teachers understand um, what kind of homes these children come from so that they can kind of um, no pun intended, but speak their language, but understand, you know, what kind of families they're coming from so they can help um, build relationships that way. Um, teachers need to have more training on what it means to be culturally and racially inclusive. And um, I think just more than ever. I mean, that's really, <clears throat> during the last year, that's definitely been amplified, but um, it's always something that's on teachers' mind to make sure that they build relationships with all their students. But it's really important that it's a high priority of the board um, to make sure that um, all students and all teachers understand the importance of their role um, um, in the community. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, in, in the primary and intermediate grades, um, supporting halfway to bilingual programs um, and making sure that all students are being supported. But then as you get to high school, um, it's important that you're putting a lot of effort and funds into the families that might be first generation students that are going to college. Um, it's really hard to, um, it's very difficult for families who have never been to college before to understand what hoops and how to fill out applications. There's so many little details that um, us with white privilege already have and we know, and it just comes, it just is part of growing up that we don't realize that there's lots of um, pieces of the system that don't work for everybody. So we need to look at the pieces of those systems and fix them so that it's easy for all students to have access to the ability to apply for colleges and then stay on that track. And, um, but then understanding um, culturally um, why students sometimes decide not to go to college and maybe talk them through that and help them and support them to become professionals. Thanks so much. So I wanna be mindful of everybody's time. I know Carmen has um, a tight schedule as a teacher. Um, so I'm gonna combine two last questions together and whatever you both wanna um, pick up on, on that one, um, great. Um, as school board members, um, I'd like to know your perspective on the role um, of a school board member as communicator and also the role of a school board member um, in setting policy for the district. I know they're kind of disparate things, but maybe one of them is more your thing. Um, so I think we start with Carmen on this one. Okay. Um, I feel like Oscar and I kind of touched on this on the last one. I mean, it's super important. One of my goals um, is that we are on at the drawing board of when policies and systems are created. So we really wanna take everyone into account, um, uh, no matter their race, no matter their culture, and make sure that supports are in place for 
um, all the people that support that child, um, everyone in their family. Um, and then, yeah, absolutely using uh, community resources to help support, um, it, to, uh, I guess, catch the shortfalls um, that maybe the school can't provide. Um, there are two parts of that question. Communication um, and policy, those are, all right. you know, what are the roles of the board for around those two things? Right. Um, this is a tricky one. Um, I, uh, I feel that as my, I've had a lot of experience um, uh, being able to uh, listen with empathy to fellow parents, fellow teachers, administrators. Um, um, there's lots of um, challenges, but I think that being able to find commonalities and then build on those is really important. Um, yeah, I think, um, and I think I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna leave it out there. I'm, Fair yeah, enough. Thanks. Oscar, <laughs> do you need a repeat of that very complicated two-part question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me start with the policy side first. And, and I already mentioned the uh, need to ensure that whatever funding does come through is spent equitably and appropriately and intentionally, and particularly in regards to the Student Success Act monies. Um, beyond that, I think before moving forward on, on, on specific policy changes, I guess we need to understand uh, why in the first place there are inequities. So I would uh, really push for an equity analysis in the entire school district. Um, and that would hopefully identify key indicators uh, that truly would uh, measure you know, those uh, disparities that uh, we see in student outcomes. Um, and, and that's from the top to the very bottom and it's very comprehensive. I've, I've worked with other schools, districts in incorporating these instruments. Um, sometimes school districts do it on their own accord. Sometimes they'll have, they'll contract with um, a company uh, that does this sort of work to, to kind of help um, in this process. So, uh, and, and, and with that, uh, it would be clear as to what, uh, well, it would be clearer <laughs> as to what, uh, policies and approaches and strategies uh, need to be um, potentially changed, altered, modified, updated, whatever it takes. Um, and, and knowing that we have that capacity to do that as a board, um, that's a cool thing. It's a powerful thing. And, and, and I guess that's where um, my role as a communicator uh, would come in to uh, share uh, not only my perspective as a, as a Chicano educator, um, but also the voices of, again, uh, those marginalized students and families that really haven't had much of any say so. Uh, so I would like to think that I would be definitely a communicator for, for those families and as well as other, you know, uh, groups of students who historically have been marginalized and, 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 and discounted. Uh, including the BIPOC and, and uh, LGBTQ plus and, and um, uh, kids living in poverty and, and kids and families that are dealing with homelessness. Um, it's very layered, multi multifaceted. Um, so um, one of the, as an old clinical social worker, one of the things that I would really push for, especially in light as to what we've uh, lived through over this past year, to really uh, better equip our schools with, with mental health practitioners to talk through uh, some of these very uh, tough issues uh, coming back and transitioning from almost a war zone that they were seeing vividly on their television um, to now hopefully tranquility, especially um, now that we're on the backside of uh, uh, yesterday's verdict. But um, so that that's... Uh, it, the social emotional well being of, of all our students, you know, balanced with the academic piece, I think will prepare them, you know, to, to what's beyond. And hopefully uh, that includes higher education. Great. So um, I'm going to flip the, the order here. Carmen, how's your time going? Do you need to? Um... I, need, I need to head out. Sorry, I have a meeting at 5 30. Uh oh. 
Okay. Do you, do you have okay. time to, to just do a quick, Hey, this is why someone should vote for you. Uh, <laughs> sure. Um, I, Hmm. Um, thank you for this opportunity to meet with you guys today. Oscar, you are amazing. Wow. Um, uh, great job. Um, Back at you. I, <laughs> uh, I feel that um, I bring a lens of a parent. I bring the lens of an educator. And I also, I feel that I'm a strong ally with um, lots of different demographics in our town um, in Central Oregon. Um, uh, Oscar was saying he grew up in LA. I grew up right outside of Oakland. So the things that have shaped me as an individual, I, um, I just hold dear to me. And I just wanna make sure that um, all students have the ability to have high levels of learning, um, no matter where they come from, what their home life is like, what socioeconomic status they have. Um, and um, yeah, I just wanna see all students succeed. And um, that's why you should vote for me. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here um, and for, you know, fitting us into your busy schedule. Um, Oscar, Thank I'm going to give you an opportunity to talk to you, but we'll let Carmen go. I want to hear what he has to say. Oh, okay. Go for <laughs> it. Go for it, Oscar. I, I uh, obviously am here for all kids, all families, and making sure that uh, their needs are being met, um, whatever that should be to, again, put them on that uh, pathway to towards success, uh, whatever that should be. Um, so why you should vote for me, I think, um, because I have a lot of experience and in, 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 in insight. And again, uh, not from a traditional perspective, but from a parochial kid's perspective, from a charter school uh, world's perspective, from a Jesuit student and teacher, former counselor perspective, uh, as well as obviously all my professionals working in public schools and as, as well as in uh, community colleges, both in Texas and here in Oregon. So um, I like to think that that knowledge and, and, and insight and, and maybe a little bit of wisdom will, will, will add a diversity of thought uh, in our board meetings beyond the diversity of you know, culture, obviously. But uh, I, I think it's really important to, uh, again, be that, uh, going back to being that voice, being that communicator, is, is really going to be uh, paramount um, in terms of what I hope to, to be on behalf of uh, our entire community. Thanks to both of you so much. I think Redmond School students and the board would be, you know, um, it would be um, wonderful if either one of you were selected for the board. Um, and we just want to thank you um, um, here at the source for participating in this um, process, letting voters get to know who you are um, and um, just for running, because I know it's not easy and you both have busy lives on top of doing this. So um, we just appreciate, um, appreciate you taking part in the process. Thank you, and, Nicole. Yeah. And having a chance to meet and you know listen to Carmen I, you know, you win, Carmen. I'm, I'm a happy guy too. So <laughs> yeah, we're, we're I, a I'm so excited. Guy. Yeah, same, same to you, Oscar. Same to you. Thank you. I gotta head out. Thank you, Oscar. Okay. Bye, Nicole. Take care, you guys. Bye, bye.